Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, and happy 2018! I've got a very weird and crazy sort of video planned for our first one for the new year. Yes, I know I'm at my travel desk right now, but this is actually a gaming-related video because I needed the entire space of my travel desk here to go ahead and show you just how weird and bulky and awkward and bulkward this console is. This thing right here is called the Gameway Family Entertainment System. It was released by a Canadian company called Zappic Games, based out of Mississauga near the, um, Toronto. I think it's a suburb of Toronto. And it was on the store shelves from 2005 to 2010, and it was only able to sell 70,000 units, which, to put that in perspective, in one year of launch, the Nintendo Switch was able to move 10 million units. So this thing right here was definitely an abject commercial failure, and we're going to take a look at what exactly made this system so horrid, so execrable, but we're also going to be taking a look at some of its uh, redeeming qualities. I think it does have a few redeeming qualities. Of course, these redeeming qualities are quite few and far between, and they certainly weren't enough to actually lift its spirit out of the inferno here. So we're going to take a look at this weird console that I never heard of before I bought it, which shows just how savvy a consumer I am. Yes, we are going to be taking a look at the Gameway Family Entertainment System right now. So, the Gameway Family Entertainment System was released by a Canadian company based out of Mississauga called Zappic Games, as I mentioned. And uh, Zappic Games, I think, was really only incorporated to do this here. And as you notice, oh look, it's so wave shaped. You see how they do here? It's such a funny play on words because it's a wave, get it? Woo, a wave. And it has made storing this thing. Uh, way, way harder than it ever needed to be. Basically what we have here is a low-cost DVD player, and boy, it feels low-cost. I'll get to that in just a little bit on how low-cost this thing is. But we have a low-cost DVD player, even though it cost the consumer $100 to go ahead and purchase this thing, so it was cheap to make, expensive to buy. That's always a good business model. <laughs> But it's a low-cost DVD player with an Altera programmable logic chip installed in there. So we have Zappic Games, which was created only to make this thing here. And we have Altera, which is a California-based um, computer chip development company. They're still in existence, Altera, out in California. And another research and development company based out of Mississauga, called Nitric helped develop this console, and Nitric, of course, is still around, and I just love all of the grammatical mistakes on their webpage when they mentioned working with Zappic Games. Zappic Games does have a website, but it seems to mostly be browser games that were developed by some random couple, and I don't think they have anything to do with this actual system here, so... Yeah, I, the only two companies uh, that still exist with all of this is um, Nitric and Altera. And there is a website called uh, www.playgamewave.com, but that domain name is for sale. So if you ever wanted to do a bad financial move, go ahead and buy that domain. You would, it would it'd be a story for 2018. Start out the new year right, you know? Buy a website that nobody will ever visit. Kind of like me in a YouTube channel nobody will ever visit, but as you can see here, these are the remotes for the console. As I said, it's a DVD system that, it's basically a DVD player that has a little more sophisticated software that we can call games, but you don't get any of the actual action, platforming, puzzle, or horror titles. 
Okay, we do get puzzle titles. We'll all get into that in a minute. Uh, I, yeah, this is my 400th take of doing this video, and it's me just trying to explain how weird this thing is. But here are the DVD remotes, and opening this thing is way harder than it needs to be. Like, you need to, like, down and up. Okay, I got it a lot easier than I usually do, and... You look at these DVD remotes here, and my goodness, this this is some cheap stuff here. I mean, I am not going to lie. We've got some very cheap things going on here. No open or close button for the Game Wave system. You just got the very basic DVD functionality here. A, B, C, D buttons to answer for um, trivia questions. Uh, it's not too good. It speaks of cheapness, and my neighbor's dog is barking. Hi, puppy! What you barking about, puppy? But, yeah, you're supposed to set the two things together, and mind you, there's no way to actually affix them to each other. And it's storing this thing is just way, way more complicated than it needs to be. So when you first turn on your Game Wave system, where are you, power button? When you first turn on your Game Wave system, you get a menu. Yeah, it's a menu. There's nothing brilliant about it. There's nothing spectacular about it. But graphically, it looks pretty solid. It looks exactly like how a DVD menu should look for the time, so I'll go ahead and give them a bone there. Now, as a DVD console, this thing can play DVDs, which is good. Like, you know, it can play your favorite movies straight from Hollywood, and it's region-free, so that is a big score for this thing. I was able to play all my British Doctor Who DVDs. It's a lot easier to import the Doctor Who DVDs from England, because they have more of them released, and they're a lot cheaper. You can spend some serious green in the United States for a Doctor Who DVD, so we just import them, and this puppy was able to play it with no problem, so huge major point for the Game Wave Family Entertainment System here. But when I go ahead and put in an audio CD, listen to some Gotter de Merong for this week. Ah, uh, where is the open close button here? But when you put a CD in here, I don't know if you guys can hear that noise uh, too clearly, but it is making a noise. Okay, now it's not doing it. The second I call it to the world's attention, it decides not to do it, but the Game Wave Family Entertainment System cannot play audio CDs, so... That is a definite problem in my book. I mean, by this point, 2005, things that were being released at this point were the Nintendo Wii and the Xbox 360 and later on the Sony PlayStation 3. So, um, the fact that this thing can't play compact discs is really kind of inexcusable at this point. I mean, the Wii couldn't play compact discs, but it what it lacked for playing other things, it made up for in having wonderful uh, titles available to purchase. So, yeah, the fact that this thing can't play a compact disc is really kind of inexcusable to me. So right over here, I have the Game Wave uh, software here, the Game Wave Family Entertainment System game discs, and I actually have the majority of the games that were ever released for the console. Thirteen were produced, and I have seven, so I have the majority of the titles, and I honestly don't really want to buy any more titles. So, just taking a look at some of the titles I got here, we have a Letters app, and... Letters app is uh, kind of a boggle, uh, scrabble sort of thing, uh, where you go around and you try to make different words from a random string of letters. Uh, the string has to be all connected, and you get points, and 
it's pretty fun, but one thing I've noticed about this particular game and every piece of software released for the game wave is that there is no single player mode. You have to have friends, and Squeaky uh, played a few of these games with me. You guys all know Squeaky, right? She helps me unbox some stuff, you'll see her running around in some vlogs, but um, she played some of these games with me. Um, she was at work making um, grown-up money while I was playing this, and as I was playing this, it wasn't fun. It wasn't really fun at all. And when you look at just at the menu design, the graphical design here, it looks fine. Okay, yeah, graphically, there's no mistakes. It's not a poor resolution or anything like that. It just... Oh, it doesn't look like there's any sort of style or flair to it. It's so boring and generic, in an effort to make something family-friendly, they really forgot to put any sort of actual spice or anything, but... The Game Wave uh, game discs do have a printed instruction manual here, and sometimes when you are actually hearing the DVD instructions, they'll tell you to refer to your printed instruction manual. We promise you'll find it hard to believe you missed so many words. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the actual external portion of the Game Wave Family Entertainment System here. And I don't know if I'll be able to turn this around. A smart man would unplug the console when he does this, but I am no smart man. So we have the, um, the standard video inputs here, but there's actually an input for S-Video, which was fairly state-of-the-art at the time, but not as state-of-art as it could have been, because this was at a point when HDMI was first being developed, and we were also going through that weird phase of the RGB component high-definition cables. That's something my capture card still nags me to go ahead and use, but... Retro consoles don't use them, and my modern consoles, it's easier to just plug the HDMI stuff into, so... Yeah, that phase didn't really go anywhere, but it's weird if they're trying to make something epically modern, why didn't they go ahead and have that option available? And also, there's an expansion port here. None of my research indicated that there was anything like an external controller or anything to make the gameplay experience... better, i.e. more interesting, more dynamic or anything like that, but um, yeah, there is an expansion port here. I don't know what you would connect to it, but yeah, if anyone knows about that, if anyone, I mean... It'd be, I'd be surprised if anybody knew too much about this machine, but if you know what that expansion port was for, um, definitely let me know down in the comment section below there. And controlling the game wave, it's fine. I mean, for the most part, it's fine. Uh, keep, uh, keep watching. Don't click away from the video yet. I'll explain a situation where the controls were not fine, but... Usually I found everything was really quite responsive, and everything worked fine. I mean, was it thrilling and captivating gameplay? Of course not. I was playing Boggle, so I'm not going to get that same feeling I would get from Zelda or Metroid, but, I mean, it was fine. It wasn't broken, it wasn't glitchy, it was fine. Up next we got Rewind. Rewind is basically trivia questions from the past couple of years. All of the questions I got seem to be really kind of recent, recent for 2005, which I have a hard time believing was over a decade ago. And I have a hard time believing I've been out of high school for over a decade. Like, when people tell me, oh, I was born in 2003, I'm like, you should be three years old. So this stuff may feel straight up retro, and then you really come to the realization, wow, not everything was all that important. Like, you know, we watch the news and we freak out about the news, and ten years later, 
the amount of stories that we actually remember is really, really minuscule. Up next, we had the game Lock 5, and again, this was another one I was alone for, and whew, this wouldn't have been fun even if Squeaky was with me playing this. Um, I don't even know. I'll play the monotone guy explaining how you play this game for a little bit here. In Lock 5, you collect numbers in an attempt to match the combinations listed on the scoreboard and score as many points as possible. At the beginning of each round, the cylinder at the top will fill with five random numbers between 1 and 6, and the same numbers will be given to each player. Players can then choose which of those numbers they want to keep by locking them in. Yeah. It it's just feels just like a random number generator here. I really don't know. I mean, why not waste your money and time playing the lottery or something? Uh, this is not fun. It, the this is that was just a complete waste of my time. I hated that. Up next, we have the Wheel of Fortune ripoff, Click, which. It's Wheel of Fortune, but you don't have uh, Pat Sajak being all funny and crazy. You don't have Vanna White in those crazy designer evening gowns, and you don't have people freaking out. Yeah, it's like Wheel of Fortune, but without the flavor and the passion. Yeah, I mean, fun enough. Again, I was alone on this one, but... um. And that really is a kicker if you're alone playing the game wave because there's no computer to play against. So, eh, yeah, this really becomes tedious when you're playing it on your own. But I'm sure I might have more fun if I ever were to play it with somebody else. But to be honest, I can't really see myself playing much of any of this again because, yeah. Not that it looks bad or is not responsive, it's just, you know, there are so many really, really good video games out there, and I'm not going to waste my time playing Click on the Game Wave. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Up next we had Sudoku, and um, Squeak Dude did join me on this, so we didn't um, realize it was... This is the only one that pretty much is a single-player game. Or maybe there is a multiplayer option, and we just didn't know how to do it, but... Yeah, this is the only Game Wave title that is really designed for one player, and Squeaky is good at Sudoku. Like, she is a beast. Like, she can tear up those puzzles like nobody's business, and... They did the... F I mean, this one kind of did have a little bit more of a style to it, but it went for, you know, stereotypical bland Japanese. They have the funny haiku that doesn't really make any sense. Okay, ha ha ha, the, that joke's kind of been done and done to death. Even ten years ago it was done to death, uh, ha ha ha. But I guess if I had to give any of these games style points, it would be this one, but... Japan has a cool style already, so you just think, Japan! There's my style! So, eh. And again, the controls on all of these have been fine. No problems with the actual gameplay. There's just no real spice or excitement to them, though. There's nothing that's making me want to scream, Let's play the Game Wave, man! No, none of these games do that to me. And the last two here were actually pack-in titles for the Game Wave system at one point. Um, later on, it was this, the VeggieTales Veg Out game. And, man, Wikipedia really disappointed me when they said it was like Mario Party. It's not. It's not at all like Mario Party. It's basically just a collection of random mini-games, and... Yeah, there's one where you pop balloons, 
There's one where you go on a scavenger hunt, and this is where the bad controls start. Oh my goodness, this was something that was begging to be on the Nintendo Wii, but... Ooh, you're playing it on a Game Wave, and getting the scavenger hunt to control is kind of like uh, hurting a big, constipated yak uphill while it's on a treadmill, while it's carrying a couple of thousands of units of a Game Wave to go ahead and toss off the mountain because nobody's buying the darn thing. That's kind of like what controlling the scavenger hunt was. It was not really all that fun. And of course there was a bingo game, which, uh, go ahead and do your Catholic jokes down in the comment section below. Oh, uh, Catholic YouTuber plays bingo! <laughs> yeah, I know, I'll take the hit. And... I don't even know what the other one was. Oh, a uh, memory concentration game. Um, Squeaky is really good at memory concentration games, but she lost this one because she had the unfortunate luck of being the first one to go. You never want to be the first turn in a memory game for obvious reasons. So, yeah, that was one of those rare occasions where I was able to beat Squeaky at a memory game. She's really good at those. But... VeggieTales, again, this game was really, really bland and there was no spice around it, which is really a shame because the VeggieTales is a funny series. It was filled with a lot of off-the-wall, wacky humor, and I don't know why they didn't have the characters take a bigger role in hosting the games, or doing funny, crazy antics around the games, and even conveying some of the biblical truths. As you know, VeggieTales is um, Christian media, and I gotta wonder, you know, there was a time when Christian media was considered some of the greatest works of human genius. You had Dante's brilliant divine comedy, Michelangelo's wonderful masterpieces in the Sistine Chapel, and then, uh, 400 years later, you have Bible Man saying, Hold my beer. Yeah, in a world where we have things like Bible Man, it's good to know that some quality Christian media is released, uh, like Veggie Tales. It conveys the biblical truths in a really engaging and dynamic way. And my mom actually worked for a few companies that sold and produced Veggie Tales stuff, and Later on, the, this company wanted to do their own thing to compete with Veggie Tales, and they called it God Rocks. It was essentially a bunch of dismembered rock people floating around. It looked quite horrible, and my mom, who doesn't like to mince words, if you've watched some of the vlogs here, my mom doesn't like to mince words, um, she mentioned at the big executive meeting, this looks horrible. You think this is going to rival VeggieTales? So they were like, oh yeah, it's um, going to rival VeggieTales and beat them. And it's also worth noting that that company she worked for is no longer in business. So, yeah. My mom knows what's up. She knows garbage when she sees it. Which I have to wonder, why does she watch from my YouTube channels? Probably out of pity, but anyway, VeggieTales. Yeah, I just wish they would have had some more dynamic character interactions, a, a more interesting way to present the content. Yeah, I mean, the controls on that scavenger hunt were a disaster, but the rest of the games are fine, but... So, fourth degree, the arc of trivia is basically just a random, very generic, very bland, very uninspired trivia game that has this video of a snake getting skinned for snake soup? Ugh! I thought this was supposed to be a family entertainment system. My gosh, that is ghastly. I mean, there are two things you never want to see made, right? Your laws and your snake soup. I mean, my goodness, yeah, I understand. You know, it's a cultural dish and a delicacy. I've never had it. It's not something that's really on my agenda, but, you know, I don't need to see all that necessarily. Ugh! Yeah. Uh, fourth degree arc of trivia with that horrifying snake stuff. And did you guys know I was actually on my high school's academic team? Yeah, th those were good times. Uh, there were some schools we would just kind of be like, yeah, we've got this. This is going to be a 
guaranteed victory. I'm squeaking on the Game Wave thing. I'm about to... Boy, wouldn't that be something if I break the plastic case here? That would just make my point on how cheaply this stuff is made. But anyway, on the academic team, there were some schools you would just be like, Oh, yeah, this is going to be a piece of cake. We can take them, no problem. And then there's the school that's filled with all of the smart people. And you're like, fine, we'll take our beating. And like... There was one time the score was like a hundred to forty or something, so it was it was a bad defeat. One other point about the game wave, the thing I actually turned on the camera to talk about here, is I wanted to test just just test it, see its processing power. Okay, you can do a logic programmed game, so I wanted to see how intense this is. So I took the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets DVD, and I popped in the Special Features DVD. The Special Features DVD for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is filled with a lot of interactive games that, and to me, this DVD is kind of like the gold standard of everything that uh, DVD should have in terms of technical capabilities, and I was able to play some of those games for a little bit, and it worked fine. It actually worked a little bit better than it did on my PlayStation 2 or some of the other DVD players that I've owned previously. Can you match four? And then the thing just randomly gave out on me, like it just had none of it. I guess maybe the thing didn't want to get caught by Severus Snape or something, so yeah, it just stopped working. I mean, I can't really compliment it for that. If it's just gonna, just gonna stop working and everything, I can't really be too happy that you played uh, all of the other mini games really, really well. I mean, you stopped working, man. That's kind of an incomplete grade in my book. Yeah. Gameway Family Entertainment System. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought of this video. Let me know if you ever had a Game Wave. Let me know if you have any other information about the Game Wave or Zappic Games or about any of these uh, companies that work with it. I'd be really interested to know a lot more about this. I kind of went in this video blind and not really knowing how to describe it, and I don't know if I ever actually achieved describing this thing to you guys, but I did the best I could, so let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought of this video. Coming up, we are going to have the vlogs from Disney World. Now, granted, they're Christmas things recorded in the Christmas of 2017, but I didn't want my first video of 2018 to be leftovers from the year 2017, so you're going to get a Christmas-themed video probably in February or something. Me working on vlogs is just, uh, you know, like... For all of the work it takes for me to make a vlog that I'm pleased with and for the viewership number I get on it, ugh, that's really hard to motivate me, but go ahead, click that like and comment and subscribe button and go ahead and uh, if you want to watch some of, of my Disney vlogs, go ahead and watch those. I need all the views I can get. I gotta say, I am really happy with some subscriber success I've had, especially Mr. Nathaniel Peters and Ms. Lady Rain. Thank you so much for subscribing. When I get a subscriber, it's kind of like a singular event, and I got two subscribers in one week. That doesn't happen on this channel, so I'm kind of ecstatic. I have the best fans in the entire world, and those two lovely folks who click that subscribe button just prove it. And granted, I know I haven't given a shout out to all of my subscribers yet, but you guys know you're the best fans in the entire world, right? You're watching this video, you know you're the best, and you know I love you guys. And remember, if you guys haven't clicked that subscribe button, subscribers are guaranteed happiness. I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and the Instagram there. The handle is at Jorn, J-O-R-N, Vaughn, V-O-N, Beagle, B-E-A-G-L-E. -E. And I have the best fans of any YouTuber in the entire world, and I will catch you guys next time with maybe some Disney vlogs, maybe a Let's Play. Who knows? It's not like I plan any of the content I do here. I'm Jordan Rolfes, and you guys are beautiful.